Often when we refer to our beliefs, uh, we'll use certain phrases to describe our understanding of God. Often we'll say this is the truth, or we might refer to it, uh, or we'll say it's true Christianity, or we might refer to it as our walk with God. None of these are wrong. They all accurately describe our understanding of God and how we live according to his commands. In thinking of this, if you would, please go to Acts 9, Acts chapter 9. What I want to look at is how the early church, specifically during the time of the apostles after Christ, referred to their understanding of God, but also how they saw themselves connected to one another and what that meant in the greater scope. So let's read verses 1 and 2 of Acts 9. It says, But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Saul, prior to his conversion, was an intense persecutor of the church. He did this out of what he thought was respect for God, but was completely misguided until Jesus literally stopped him in his tracks on the road to Damascus. Notice in verse 2, he says that if he found any belonging to the way, that he would bound them to Jerusalem. What does this mean, the way? Why does Paul use it like this, and what's he referring to exactly? We might be quick to think, well, yeah, he's using that to refer to those that are Christians, or a shortened version of the phrase, God's way of life. And while this is not totally wrong, there's more to it, or more to why it's referred to as the way by the apostles. And that's what we're going to look at. This term, the way, in the sense of how it's being used, is only found in the book of Acts. It's used in five, maybe six verses, and always as somewhat a passing comment in the greater context of whatever's going on. We don't need to look at all of them, but there are a couple that I want to point out in addition to this one here in chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 2, is the first reference uh, to the apostles using it as a title. So let's go to chapter 22 now, chapter 22, verse 3, Acts 22, 3. Here Paul is reflecting on his past life as a persecutor, and he makes another reference to the way in chapter 22. Verse 3. I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God as all of you are this day. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to, pre to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. From them I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. Paul says that he persecuted this way to the death. But here again, what is it exactly that he's viewing as the way? If we say simply that the way refers to people who live a Christian life, that is people who are natured by good works, something we should be anyway, then why would Paul be so against people who are just being good people? Doing wholesome, good things for their local people and brethren is nothing to be so enraged about uh, or to be persecuting them so intensely for. Was Paul basically saying that, you know, I don't like you helping your neighbor or giving to the needy, uh, so I'm going to throw you in prison because you're out there doing good for humanity? Probably not. I doubt that's all there was to it. Rather, Paul is referring to the way as an offset of Judaism something that threatened the Jewish belief system that certainly Paul was a part of. And there's something that is at the core of this, I believe, and we'll come to that in a bit. To support that this term is not just thought of as a good Christian way of life, but rather a belief and a mindset, let's go to Acts 19. Acts 19 and verse 23. This will start to take shape for us with how to understand this term. Its use here in Acts 19 is probably the most helpful example we have, in my opinion, to understand how the apostles were using this term. Starting in verse 23 of Acts 19. 
About that time, there arose no little disturbance concerning the way, which to me when I read that sounds like something from Star Wars, <laughs> but anyway. Verse 24, for a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen, meaning he brought a lot of business. These he gathered together with the workmen in similar trades and said, men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people, saying that gods made with hands are not gods. Let's stop there. So why do I think this verse is the most helpful in determining what this term, the way, means? There arose, as it says, no little disturbance concerning the way. Notice it then goes to describe an incident that was not about Paul preaching good works or even about living righteously necessarily, but rather he had, as it says, persuaded and turned away a great many people. But turned them from what? Not away from the true God, but to him. Not away from the teaching of Christ, but to an understanding of him. We see here the reference to the way refers to a belief system that certainly has a component of walking with God, but also first walking to him. And this is done in the form of preaching the gospel. Just as we read that Paul persuaded and turned away many from a religion of false gods or those made with hands, the way was the true conversion to an understanding of God. And it started with Jesus Christ, which is at the core. The disturbance to the way was a resistance to the work of God. It was a denial of Christ and belief in him. But how did the apostles come up with the idea to call it, or call their preaching the gospel and conversion of those to Christ, to call it the way? I'd like to look at two areas where it likely originated from, and both of them tell us a lot about this term. The first place is Mark chapter 1, which I can just read, Uh, no need to turn there. Mark 1, verse 1. Uh, Mark starts his book with a prophecy quoted from Isaiah 40 uh, that's about John the Baptist. And so that's what we have here in the opening of Mark 1. Verse 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Though this is a prophecy about John the Baptist, notice Mark starts his book with the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and then immediately follows that with an introduction to John the Baptist. John was, of course, ready to, or, uh, to make ready a people uh, and an understanding of both who and what the Messiah is who was to come. This making straight the paths of the Lord is a likely foundation of the term, the way, used later by the apostles, because it speaks of both belief in and turning to Christ. And we see Mark connecting these two concepts immediately, I believe, and at the beginning of his book. This is further corroborated in our second example in the Gospel of John. So please go to one more passage in John 14. John 14. I think this section really provides the integral connection to not only what we just looked at in Mark, but the mission or understanding that the apostles would have had uh, that they would have gone forth with after the time of Christ, using these words that Christ spoke in John 14. Let's start actually at uh, verse 1 of chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Understand here that he's not talking about heaven, but about eternal life and being one with God. Verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. 
From now on, you do know him and have seen him. When Jesus says in verse 4, you know the way to where I'm going, he then says two verses later that he is the way. So when he tells the disciples that they know the way to where he is going, he's, he is saying that the way to get to where I am going is me. I am the way. Obey me, follow me, and you will get to where I am going. Well, where is it he's going? <laughs> this was Thomas's question. He answers this question, but perhaps not in the way we might have expected. He says in verse 6 that no one comes to the Father except through me. This statement might seem suddenly pulled from nowhere. It seems a bit out of context almost from what Thomas's question was. But is it? Jesus is telling the disciples that if they know him, that if they believe in and follow in the same steps and teachings that he did, that they will know the way to the Father and that they do know him from now on. In other words, he's further showing that he is the way, the way to God. So what is the way to the Father? It is through and of Jesus Christ. He is the way. Because of who Jesus was, uh, what he represented and was to do, it qualified him to go to the Father. So let's think about this. If Jesus himself is the way, then belief obedience, and loyalty to him is the way. If Jesus himself is the way, then belief, obedience, and loyalty to him is the way. The, the apostles were instructed to preach the gospel, bring people to repentance, and ultimately make them disciples of Christ. Remember, this is what we saw happening in Acts 19 uh, with Paul. He was turning them away from false gods and turning them to Christ. In John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is understanding the true God. When you are a disciple of Christ, it means you are a follower of him. It means that, you, that for, if you follow him, then you believe and teach and do all that he believed and taught and did. And by doing these things, it places you and then keeps you in Christ, who is the way. When the apostles in the first century church referred to the work they were doing as the way, it was about preaching the gospel and about instructing and turning people to Christ so that they too would have an opportunity at life, eternal life. The way, as used in Acts, was not just to describe God's way of life, as we might tend to want to think about it, but rather describe what is Jesus Christ and what that means for me and you and for any of those that respond to the truth that they may have life and therefore know the way.